Hey YouTube, I'm back this time with a very interesting video. I am back finally with a Beauty Empties. The last time I did a Beauty Empties was back in December and I had kind of been talking a little bit about the fact that I feel like I just don't have enough products to do a Beauty Empties every single month. I feel like I'm definitely still in that boat. However, I don't know what happened. Like, I mean, I was a conscious being between December and now, but it has been eight months since I've done beauty empties. I cannot possibly look at this overflowing empties bag for another month. I don't know. I thought about like going for the gold and doing like a nine month, but it's going to have to be eight months because this is driving me bonkers. I just have way too much stuff. Um, and I just wanted to share with you. So grab a snack, grab a drink. I don't know but this is gonna be a long video. I'm gonna have a ton of stuff to share with you guys. So let's jump into my eight months of beauty empties. May God have mercy on my soul if I go eight more months without doing one of these. I think like every other month, I think that's gonna be my goal. I just cannot do every single month, but eight months, that's a little extreme even for me. So let's dive right in. Uh, the first things are gonna be like, Things I've used up a whole bunch of because I use them every day. They're not particularly sexy. It's just really part of my routine that I really swear by. So let's jump right in and get into all of this because my bag is overflowing and I just can't anymore. So first let's get into my toothpaste. As you guys know, if you've been with my channel for, I guess, at least eight months in a day is that in this house, we are Sunstein people. So I will say, I think that Crest and Colgate taste better than Sunstein, but we use Sunstein because my husband's dentist, a uh, dentist recommends it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tubes of Sunstein. So not especially sexy, but you know, clearly I use these, I mean, a couple of times every single day. Um, we use mostly the Sunstein Pro Um We are not loyal between like the whitening and the daily protection, the, you know, whatever. But again, our dentist recommends these. I just had a cleaning, I don't know, maybe like a week and a half ago. And my dentist commented that my teeth look good and that they're healthy. So, um, and I said, oh, I use Sunstein. And they said, yeah, it's a good brand. So Sunstein is where it's at. It's what we use. I also have a travel size of it. Um, I traveled to a couple different places this summer. So that was definitely um, in my travel bag. Also, this must have been some fluke. I don't know. I must have been traveling somewhere and maybe just needed some toothpaste quickly. So I also used a Crest 3D White. Again, I think that Crest and Colgate do taste better than Sensodyne, but I I mean, we're so used to using Sensodyne anymore. So Crest 3D White, Radiant Mint, it was fine, whatever. Next, let's, oh, I do actually have one more like mouth health oral hygiene. I don't know. I'm not a dentist. Um, but anyway, one more item in that kind of realm. This is the Oral-B Glide Pro Health Threader Floss. So something that you would not know is that I do have a permanent retainer on the back of my bottom teeth. Um, that is definitely a pain to keep clean, definitely a pain to floss. So these threaders are really where it's at for me. So it, I mean, they're just like a single thread. It really is just like floss but it is shaped in such a way that you can use it around braces, you can use it around retainers. So again, if you have a kiddo with braces or maybe you have braces or maybe you have a permanent retainer like I do, um, this is definitely a good option for being able to floss around that retainer to be able to floss around braces. So I definitely recommend them. I get mine at the grocery store, but again, these, they're just a the Glide Pro Health. They're like threaders that are good for that kind of situation if you got metal in your mouth like I do. Okay, so next let's get into my contact solution. So you guys would probably also know if you've been with my channel for at least eight months that I wear contacts. I wear glasses sometimes, but pretty much contacts is like my thing every single day. So I used up five of these large bottles of BioTrue multi-purpose contact solution. It is definitely my brand of choice. I prefer it over other brands that I've tried, especially having lived in Denver for a couple of years where it's just such a dry environment. BioTrue was definitely my preference when I was living there. And now I'm just so used to it and loyal to the brand that it's just what I buy. So BioTrue is a little bit pricey, relatively speaking. I mean, contact solution in general is kind of expensive. 
Um, but it's totally worth it. I like it. I do have a little thing of BioTrue uh, like re-wetting drops that I keep in my cosmetics bag in my purse just for any kind of moment where my contacts are dry throughout the day. But most of the time, especially since I've been living in Kansas City, I really don't need it that often. But if you wear contacts, you know that when you're out and about and they're getting dry or uncomfortable or whatever, like it's really not a good feeling. So again, BioTrue, I love it for soaking my contacts at night and the rewetting drops are great for during the day. Now let's get into my facial cleanser. I'm always a clean and clear person. I have relatively low maintenance skin. So from time to time I'll have breakouts and whatever. Um, but for the most part, my skin is pretty manageable. So I used two of the clean and clear morning burst facial cleanser. This has vitamin G, vitamin C and ginseng. So two of these, I will usually go through one of these every five or six weeks or so. I really wish that Clean and Clear would go cruelty free, but it's owned by Johnson & Johnson. So honestly, I don't know that that will ever happen, but my cleanser is something that I do break my cruelty free rule for just because I need a cleanser that works for me. I also, so those are the eight ounce. I also used up two of the 12 ounce in the same thing. Again, it has bursting beads. They're not plastic. They're, I mean, if you like squish them between your fingers, they'll dissolve. So um, they do break apart. They're not going to go down your drain and they just feel good on the skin. So, so again, this is the vitamin C and ginseng. It definitely has an invigorating scent to it. I also used up two of the eight ounce morning bursts and this is the hydrating facial cleanser. Honestly, I prefer this. I just tend to buy the orange one more because the orange one I think is easier to find. Um, so this has, again, bursting beads. It says it wakes you up and boosts skin's moisture with cucumber extracts. So this smells just like a uh, cucumber melon from Bath and Body Works. If you're a cucumber melon fan and you're looking for a cleanser, this might be a good option for you. Um, from time to time, my skin can get kind of dry, so the hydrating is nice. Again, the hydrating is my preference. My favorite one is actually the yellow one. It's like a, it has caffeine, like lemon and caffeine in it, and I really like it. I think it's fun and invigorating, but again, the hydrating one is nice too. All right, I also used up a couple of bags of uh, uh, cotton balls. Not a whole lot to say about this. I used up one from Ulta, one from Equate, and one from Top Care Everyday. I don't know, I probably bought it at the grocery store. Who knows? But um, something I discovered last year is that it is in fact possible to dislike a cotton ball. So I have found that the jumbo cotton balls are my preference. I couldn't even tell you, I mean, I don't know, whatever, but yeah, like the bigger, the better, I think with cotton balls and yeah, I just, I liked every single one of these. So Equate was fine. I think Ulta was my favorite because they were the biggest ones, at least out of the three of these. But like I said, apparently it is possible to dislike a cotton ball because last year I had smaller ones. Um, and by that, I mean, apparently regular size and they just did not do the job for me. So those jumbo ones, I think are where it's at for anyone's vanity. Okay, so now I'm getting into my giant kind of ratchet Kate Spade empties bag. This bag, as you can see, has clearly seen better days. Will I keep this around? I don't really know, but it's so big and like full of stuff that honestly, I'm just gonna grab stuff out of it and we're just gonna go, honey. So the first thing I'm grabbing is a shampoo. This is from Tresemme. This is the Rich Moisture with Hyaluronic Plex seven times luxurious moisture. So again, this is the shampoo. I also have the conditioner. Yeah, the conditioner in here. So I bought these both from Hy-Vee, just a chain of grocery stores around Kansas City. Um, and I got them because I had like a promotion on an app called Fetch that I like to use. Um, so yeah, I have also the conditioner. The thing is, it smelled good. It felt nice on my hair. My day one hair was great, but I found that the moisturizing shampoo and conditioner was just a little bit heavy for my hair. I definitely found that even early-ish or around midday on day two, my hair was pretty greasy and I just did not have the patience for it. So I did power through the entire liter of both of those, but I will not be repurchasing. It was just too heavy for my hair. However, if you have like especially dry hair, then it might be a good option for you. So yeah, that's it. I would not repurchase, but it was not horrendous. Next thing that I will share with you is another um, hair product. This is the Paul Mitchell Color Protect Conditioner. So back in January, 
I dyed my hair navy and this just kind of helped um, keep that color going. I'm a Paul Mitchell girl. I definitely grew up with Paul Mitchell for sure. The salon that I had my hair dyed at and the salon that I usually go to down in Wichita when I get my hair colored is a Paul Mitchell salon. Um, so that's kind of also why I just grew up with the brand. So Paul Mitchell is cruelty free. You can find it at grocery stores. You can find it at Ulta. You can find it at JCPenney. So just a good brand. I would definitely recommend it. And I've had the Color Protect for a while and I would repurchase it. More hair care. I have this No Fade Fresh shampoo. It is a color depositing shampoo. So when my blue started to fade, I was a little bit surprised because at least for me personally, it faded a little bit green, which I was, I don't know, I was expecting it to fade a little purple because I do have pretty prominent red tones in my hair. Um, and I didn't bleach it before I had it dyed blue, by the way. But anyway, short story long it did fade a little bit green. So I decided to kind of rejuvenate my color from time to time with this blue shampoo. I really liked it. So this lasted me probably about four or five uses because it says in the directions that you should be liberal about using it. And yeah, it was, I mean, it suggests that it's really pigmented and it truly was. So it definitely helped my color last for a while. I really noticed a difference between if I had gone like a week or so without using it versus if I had used it the day before. So it was very clear. It was a very, again, rich blue. It says that when you apply this, you should put on um, like rubber gloves or latex gloves. A hundred percent agree. I did not do that the first time and I regretted it. So um, the next couple of times I used this, I used gloves and it was a, just a really easy application process. It did not transfer after my hair was dry. So yeah, I would recommend this color depositing shampoo if you are ever like in the market for that kind of product. All right, so next, again, I'm just like pulling stuff. Honestly, I, I can't even do this. Uh, so this is the Alba Botanica Acne Dote Astringent. I use this from time to time. I definitely don't use it all the time because I feel like with my skin, even if it's a good product like this astringent because I've used this for a long time, I find with my skin, the less stuff I use, honestly, the better my skin is. So I'll use astringent from time to time, especially if I feel like my skin's like especially rough looking. But generally speaking, I just use it sometimes. So I used to use it twice a day. I don't really anymore. However, just in general, if you're looking for an astringent, I would recommend Alba Botanica. It is vegan. It is cruelty free. It is all the good things. I would recommend it. The next couple things I have are some antiperspirants. They're both from Secret. I'm so glad that Secret went cruelty free a couple years ago. Um, and these are both the aluminum free. Something I will say about the aluminum free is that I don't think they last as long as the antiperspirants that have aluminum, um, but I like them better. Like just in general, I prefer using the aluminum free. So I have real rose and real cucumber. I liked both of them. I did not think that the, that the scent with either one of them was especially in your face. So it's not like I felt like I really smelled like rose or I really smelled like cucumber. They were just nice products to use, but like if you were actually sniffing them, you could tell that they were scented. Next, I have a setting mist. This is from Morphe. Morphe is my go-to brand for setting mist and for concealer. This is the Jumbo Continuous Setting Mist. Uh, this lasts me a long time, clearly, because it's the only setting mist I have in my beauty empties over the course of eight months. This was 6.5 ounces. So I really like Morphe Setting Mist. I think it goes on very nicely. It's an aerosol. So I mean, if that deters you from using it or buying it at all, just know that. But I really love that it sprays very evenly. It feels good. It's not fragranced per se, but it, I think it smells nice. And yeah, I like to use it. Okay, so next I have a couple of packs of uh, makeup remover wipes. I bought these both in two different situations where I was traveling on the fly and I either needed a makeup removing product like with me while I was traveling or I was just going on a quick trip and just needed something. So I had the Neutrogena makeup remover wipes. I love these. I don't think that Neutrogena is cruelty free. I just picked these up because I did go on a couple of day trips and I just kind of wanted something really quick and easy like this that could collapse down rather than my normal makeup uh, 
eraser towels. So they smelled great. Again, not necessarily fragranced, I guess, um, but I don't know, there's like a Neutrogena scent, I think. Um, and they felt really nice. They were so soft. Honestly, these are the softest makeup remover wipes I've ever used. So if you're a wipes person and if you're not cruelty-free, at least not necessarily, I would recommend Neutrogena. I liked it. It's just that I only bought it because I was like, I don't know, on the fly. I just needed something. The other one I have is these Pacifica glowing makeup removing wipes. These are vegan and cruelty-free. So if you are cruelty-free and if you use makeup wipes, um, Pacifica is nice. I was in a situation, honestly, where this is actually back from December. I used these a long time ago and they lasted me probably about a month, which is why they didn't appear in my December empties. I was in a situation where I had to go home to go to a, um, I guess what I would call a difficult funeral. Um, so I, uh, like one of my cousins passed unexpectedly back in December and it was really rough. Um, so I honestly bought this because and I took it to, or like with myself to her service, just in case I needed to kind of touch up while I was there. So anyway, um, for what it's worth, again, Pacifica is a brand I don't use especially often, but I do like it whenever I use these products. And again, if you're a makeup wipes person, and if you're cruelty free, this is a good option for you. Okay, next I have a couple of makeup products. So I have two mascara primers. These are the CoverGirl Lash Blast Amplify Primer. I use this primer every single day. I do notice a big difference between using it and not. I don't wear false lashes. My lashes are like totally 100% me. Like I definitely don't knock people for wearing falsies. It's just not really my thing. Um, so yeah, I use the primer instead to really give me some nice full long lashes. And again, I do 100%, even after all these months of using the primer, 100% I do notice a difference between using it and not. Next, let's get into some mascara. I've got a number of these because I do toss them every three months. I have the CoverGirl Clump Crusher Mascara and I like the green one. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so um, these I think are just really good for lengthening again on top of the primer. I just think they work really nicely. This is clearly the one I use every single day. From time to time, especially in the summer, I do use a brown mascara from CoverGirl. I do prefer this one in the green tube just because I feel like it does a better job of keeping my lashes separated than um, then Lash Blast, like the brown one, or the brown mascara and the orange tube does. Um, but again, yeah, this is just my everyday. I'm really glad that CoverGirl went cruelty-free several years ago. I love their mascaras. Okay, next, let's get into a little bit more hair care. I do have a lot of hair care in here. So I have a couple of mini conditioners that I took while I was traveling. The one that I used up most recently is this um, Aussie Miracle, a three minute Miracle Moist Deep Conditioner. Same kind of thing with the Tresemme. I'm finding that while I used to love moisturizing or yeah, like moisturizing shampoos and conditioners, I feel like anymore they just are a little bit heavy in my hair. Same kind of thing. I just felt like my hair got a little too greasy in the middle of day two and that just doesn't work for me so i know a lot of people do love the three minute miracle moist but it's just too heavy for me however a conditioner that i did enjoy was from herbal essences this is another another mini this is the rose hips conditioner so like the 90s rose hips fragrance that we got from um from herbal essences so good so good i was afraid i'd like squeeze it. it would go all over my face but anyway so um, I use this, when did I use this? Oh, when I went to DC back in March, I just took a couple um, travel size items with me and that was one of them. So again, I would recommend Herbal Essences. Don't quote me on this, but I believe they went cruelty free. Again, I need to check that online, but I feel like maybe they did recently, like this year or last year. So I definitely wanna check that out because some of my favorite hair products are by Herbal Essences. More hair stuff. I have a Paul Mitchell Color Protect Shampoo. Same kind of thing as a conditioner. I've used this multiple times. I've dyed and colored my hair multiple times. And yeah, I really like it. I think it does increase the longevity of my hair color. Let me see if I can dive in and get any other hair stuff. 
So I also used up the shampoo of the Herbal Essences Rose Hips again. I like it. I would recommend it. I think I will look online and see if it is cruelty free. I also used up a travel size of the Garnier Fruity Sleek and Shine. Same kind of thing as the moisturizing shampoos and conditioners. I feel like it's just a little heavy for me anymore. So I will be avoiding it whenever I need some travel size products. Um, a shampoo and conditioner that I did enjoy is from Garnier Fructis. This is the Curl Nourish. Even though my hair is naturally straight, sometimes I do curl it. Um, and I will like the night before because I wash my hair at night. If I know that I'm going to curl my hair the next day, I will, and I'm washing my hair that night, I will use this curl nourish. It just is designed to just kind of help my curls not be frizzy, especially because I do heat style them. They're not natural for me. So again, curl nourish is at least I found kind of where it's at when you need to actually style your curls. So I liked it. I would recommend it, especially for my curly people out there. All right, next, let me see again if I have any other hair care. So I have a, a Sleek and Shine shampoo. Again, it was fine. The conditioner was just a little too heavy for me, so I'm gonna forego it. This is not an empties, this is actually a declutter. This is the Tea Tree Lavender Mint Moisture Milk. This is a Paul Mitchell um, product. I had this for a long time and really the point of it is that after or when you have wet hair, you just put it in your hair, dry it either with a blow dryer or naturally and it just is supposed to, again, help your hair retain more moisture. Again, I feel like maybe this is just a problem I just don't have anymore because this just got heavy for my hair. It is more than halfway used. So clearly for a long time it did work for me and I noticed a difference and I liked it. But again, it just weighs down my hair a little bit anymore. So I'm done with it. The next thing that I used up is also from Garnier, but this is a cleansing water. This is the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water, all-in-one waterproof makeup remover. So I used to have an eyeliner that was oil-based, so I needed a waterproof um, remover for it. And my, um, hello words, my makeup eraser towel just was not really working for me with it. So for a while I was using up this micellar water. I liked it. It did leave a bit of an oily residue, maybe because it's designed to take off waterproof makeup, but for what it's worth, it did work very nicely and I liked it. So in the future, whenever I have something that's waterproof, like most of the time I don't wear waterproof makeup, um, in the future, though, when I pick up something that is waterproof, I will definitely pick up more of that micellar water. Let's get into some sheet masks. So I, for the longest time, just never really used these, but I wanted to get more into them because I have a whole bunch of them. Most of these are from Tony Moly. So I have two of the Tony Moly sheet masks in I'm Lemon. This is a brightening sheet mask. I feel like maybe I just don't use them often enough to really notice the difference, but for what it's worth, they are really fun. And I also have the Tony Moly I'm Pomegranate for Elasticity. I have two, again, Tony Moly in I'm Aloe. This is moisturizing. And I do have one from the Cream Shop. This is a Hello Kitty mask. Cream Shop masks are fun. Um, so yeah, it says shimmering pearl, intense glow, vitamin C, reduces blemishes. Again, I kind of just do these for fun. I don't really do them often enough. I mean, clearly this is what I did in eight months. Um, to really notice a difference, but I am wanting to make a point of using this, using a sheet mask more frequently because I do have a ton of them in my beauty tote underneath my bathroom sink. Okay, so getting kind of toward the bottom, let's get into a couple things that are not especially exciting. I used up a, um, a bottle of rubbing alcohol. I use this primarily um, on, you know, like an open cut or I use these to clean my piercings. So I only have two, I mean, they're in my ears, but um, this is my solution that I use to clean my piercings. I don't get any of the special stuff from like Claire's or whatever. Honestly, I'm not that fancy. I just go with straight up rubbing alcohol and it works for me to take care of my piercings especially. I also used up a bottle of the Cutex Care Nourishing Nail Polish Remover. Um, lately, I've been doing my nails at home a little bit more. Um, you know, just to tide me over in between mani pedis. So I've been using this. So yeah, this worked just fine. I liked it. I would repurchase this brand. And in fact, I think I already have. But anyway, neither here nor there. 
Um, one more hair product, it looks like. I have another of the mini shampoos in um, Herbal Essences Rose. Again, I like it. I would recommend it, repurchase it. Very fun and nostalgic if you were a, were a child in the late 1900s, as my kiddos at work would say. Let's get into a little bit of makeup. I used up three concealers. I clearly use up the same concealer every single day. Honestly, most days I don't even wear foundation anymore. I just do spot concealing. Um, but this is the Morphe Filter Effect Concealer. My color is C8, I believe. Light 8. Yeah, I guess now they're calling it Light 8. So Light 8 and Warm. I feel like sometimes these can be difficult to find in my color, but Generally speaking, I have good luck with them and I like them. I get mine at Ulta and you can use Ulta coupons with these, by the way. So they last me a good amount of time. I like them. It's a good color for me. What I love about them most, honestly, is that they stay put. So the concealer definitely lasts me throughout the day. Like I said, most days I don't even wear a foundation. I just will spot with the concealer and it works just fine for me. Okay, so now let's get into a couple more antiperspirants. I have a Secret Outlast, and also I have an Old Spice Pure Sport. I did use up both of these. This one was pretty random. I went to um, Orlando on a business trip back in December, and to my horror, I realized when I got there that I did not pack any any antiperspirant. And I was like about to sit with a whole bunch of people at a conference for two days. That was a no-go. So I didn't have transportation. I didn't have any purse rent. Like something had to happen. So I wound up going down to um, the the front desk at the hotel where I was staying. And I'm like, please save my life. I need some kind of something. And they're like, well, we only have Old Spice. And I said, honey, I'm sold. Like, I don't care. Just get me a little bit of something. I need something because this is not going to be a thing. Um, so yeah, I used up this little mini in Old Spice. Honestly, even though it's marketed toward men, I think it's fine. Uh, I mean, it definitely has a masculine scent to it. But again, just like my secret antiperspirants, I, the scent was definitely not so in your face that other people were like, oh, who smells like a guy? Oh, it's Rachel. So no, like it was totally fine. It worked. I was just in such a bind that I was like, whatever. But you know, for what it's worth in Orlando, it worked just fine for me. Okay, so let's get into a little bit more stuff. I have a couple of tins of fashion tape. This is from Hollywood. Uh, yeah, Hollywood Fashion Secrets. You can get these on Amazon. Honestly, they're way cheaper on Amazon, but you can also find them at Ulta. Fashion tape is just extremely sticky, double-sided tape that you can use on fabric. So you can tape fabric to fabric or like fabric to skin. I've done both. I think they're more effective when it's fabric to fabric, but I go through these. I keep one of these in my purse all the time. The way that I use it most often is that I will close up any gaping in like a button up shirt. It's really good for instances like that or if I have like a bit of lace that is kind of like being funky and I just need to like lay it down on my skin, it's also good for that. So again, clear, double-sided, very sticky tape that's meant for any kind of like fashion situation, 100% would recommend it. I've used these for several years and I absolutely recommend this uh, brand. So like I said, you can find, the, find it the cheapest on Amazon, but you can also find it at Ulta if you're in a pension, you just kind of need a ten of it. Okay. So next, we're gonna get into a couple other items. I used up a hand sanitizer from Victoria's Secret. This is in the scent Pomegranate Citrus. I have a whole bunch of these and I just need to use it up. So it's one ounce, it smelled fine, it worked fine, whatever. Not a whole lot to say about that. Getting toward the end. I also used up a uh, base coat and top coat from LA Colors. I have since repurchased this. Um, again, it's just clear, it's nice. I'll use it. Um, again as a base coat and also as a top coat and sometimes honestly I'll just put it on my nails when they're not painted with anything but I just want them to be a little shiny a little lacquered just to get by and look like relatively nice. I have another one of my mascara primers from CoverGirl again I love it I swear by it 100% recommend. I also have I don't know what the brand is RT Oh, Real Techniques. That must be it. Real Techniques. Okay. Um, this is a blush brush. I bought it at Ulta. 
who knows when, probably a couple years ago. It's really like still a fine shape and this pink was, it's always been this color. However, I found that this blush brush is just a little too big for me. I felt like it was um, difficult for me to keep control of where my blush was when I was using this. So I have declared it and I have since repurchased or purchased a smaller brush so that I have a little bit more control over where that color goes. Speaking of blush, I I don't know if I would quite call it an empty, but this is my CoverGirl True Blend So Flushed High Pigment Blush, and this is in the color Sweet Seduction. It was kind of like a nice, a little bit orangey, kind of rosy pink color. I prefer pink blush. Lately, I've been using a peachy one, but pink is my preference in terms of color. Now, this is in here because... <laughs> I was so sad. One day, and this was like a couple weeks ago, I dropped it and it shattered and went everywhere. There was no saving it, unfortunately. However, I had had it for a long time already. I was hardly making a dent in it. Um, but yeah, it was a great blush. I would recommend it. I would repurchase it. It's just that, unfortunately, it suffered a premature death. It was very sad. Okay, now let's get into some lip products. I do have a couple of lip balms. I have one from Blistex and Fruit Smoothies. This is Melon Medley. It was, I don't know, a nice flavor. I was gonna say like, oh, it was tasty, but like, do I sit around eating my lip balm? Anyway, Melon Medley, it was nice and fruity. I also used up one from Lip Naturals and Peppermint. That was very nice and pepperminty, felt nice on my lips. And also one that I randomly found, I mean, not like in life, but like in my junk drawer. When I was moving Chap E's lip balm, it just was a very generic moisturizing chapstick. It was fine. I'm very much so a chapstick person. It drives me nuts to have uh, dry lips. So you will see me actually use up clearly multiple chapsticks. Speaking of lip products, I also have one of these uh, lip glosses from Victoria's Secret. I used to work at Victoria's Secret. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, by the way, lifting and lipstick, it's down below. Um, you may know that probably in maybe about a month, I will post a video about what it's like to work at Victoria's Secret, pros, cons, why I quit, etc. But just know that I worked there for about a year-ish um, and I used up one of their tingling lip plumping lip glosses. Do I feel like it plumped my lips? I mean, maybe, but it definitely tingled. So it was fine, but I'm more of a lip balm person. Okay, next I am decluttering this Fenty Beauty liquid lipstick. This is in the color Uncensored. Um, this was given to me a couple of years ago. Um, so Fenty Beauty, I thought I had really great color payoff. Again, I can really only speak for the liquid lipstick because this is the only Fenty product I've had. Excellent color payoff. I also noticed that it was very comfortable and easy to wear. The only thing though is that I typically am a Kylie person. I cringe a little bit at like celebrity beauty brands, but I, I mean, I guess this is Rihanna, but Kylie Cosmetics or Kylie Lip Kit is really where it's at for me. I love Kylie lip products because they have the longevity. They're relatively easy or like kind of comfortable to wear. In fact, this is a Kylie color right here um, that I got in Orlando. Um, and they just have the longevity. So I feel like this one just transfers a little bit too easy. So while the color was fantastic, it was very comfortable. It just transferred a little bit too easily for my comfort. And so for that reason, I loved it for a long time, but I am going to declutter it because again, I just do, I just favor Kylie products. So last couple of things I have, and then we are donezo with this video. I can't even believe it. I have a um a eyeliner this is the uh the nyx epic wear waterproof eyeliner this is one i was talking about earlier where i used my cellar water um this one is in brown and i just kind of found after i used up my micellar water that i just prefer um uh eyeliners that are not waterproof i prefer them that have a little bit of a, a like a defined tip. This one, the tip of this was a little bit bigger. I really like like to get a tip that is as fine as possible. So um, it was fine. I wouldn't not recommend it, but for myself personally, I have other ones I prefer. Okay, so next I do have a couple of, actually don't, I do have one more eyeliner. This is the NYX Professional Makeup. That's the point, hella fine 
eyeliner. This one did have a finer tip than the brown and this one I have repurchased. I really like it. So it's just easier for me to control and I like that about it. A couple of lip products. I have um, kind of like the remains of a, um, a lip liner from Kylie. This is in the color Mary Jo K. It is my favorite red that she does. So I just kind of got rid of this because I've already gotten rid of the liquid lipstick because it was drying up because it was so old and I'm just getting rid of this because this pencil is getting a little bit dry too. Next I and the last two things I have are these liquid or not liquid but um these kind of like lip crayons from NARS. This is in the color Cruella. I am decluttering these because again I have found that I just really will gravitate toward my liquid lipsticks. I really gravitate toward my Kylie products and I loved these for a long time. Uh, I guess I can google this but I don't believe that NARS is cruelty free. Maybe somebody correct me if you know better but NARS is not cruelty free. However, I will say that this is a beautiful color. Again, it's the color Cruella. I believe you can still buy it and it's just so beautiful and I loved it for a long time. But again, I'm just moving on to products I prefer more. So, holy moly, that is it for my very intense, crazy, wild, out there eight months of beauty empties. Hope you all made it this far and have enjoyed. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Instagram at Lifting and Lipstick. It's down below. I would love to do another Beauty MTs in about two months. I can't do this eight-month stuff anymore. And that is it. So, as always, thank you for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.